fellas, welcome back to another episode of Cringe Confessional. Cringe Confessional, the only show on the internet where you could see some of the most harrowing tales of IRL embarrassment. I set up a form, cringe.coney.gg, where people could anonymously send me their most embarrassing stories, their cringiest moments in their life, and I could laugh about it. And it's totally anonymous, and we're all going to laugh about it together. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope you like it. If you don't, uh, it's kind of, I get it. I know a lot of people don't like embarrassing cringe content. But I hope, maybe you will. It's worth a shot. Let's get to cringing! Once at middle school, they did an art contest in which everyone could participate. Pog! I decided to make something even though I wasn't really expecting to win or anything. A lot of ideas were flowing through my head. And then it came. I has a big idea and had two days to make it. Okay. So after finishing it, I bring it to the school. And since I was at the arts and crafts club, I decided to show it to some of the people there. Uh-huh. I f painted a ripped off muscular tails, the fox from Sonic the Hedgehog. Are you here? Is the person that submit this here with us right now? I would like you. Can you speak on this a bit? Could you send it? I just want to see. Not for my own collection, obviously, but like... Wait, wait, uh, what, what spurred this burst of creative inspiration? Like, you're just sitting at home, you're like, oh, oh god, this art thing coming. By the way, you didn't have to enter the art contest. You said you didn't expect to win. You're not a natural artist, right? Why did you decide to enter with this? I just want to know what, what caused this inspirational burst, that's all. You sound like a very creative young man. At that point, I'm surprised none of the teachers who saw it found it inappropriate, even though it was pretty much a naked muscular man with a tail skin. <laughs> it even okay. got hung on with all the other art pieces that participated on the main hall. Oh my and God. by the way, it had my name on it. Oh no. I obviously didn't win the contest, obviously. but I still find very funny that they let it slide with it saying a thing. I still have it and can send a photo of it. Please it's do. actually not that bad of a painting. Please do. I am begging you to do that. It's all it's almost weirder if it's good, right? Like if it's a really good painting, that's way weirder cuz then it's just like this kid has practiced before. This kid has talent. I regret to inform you guys that uh because of the backlog of cringe confessional cuz we get a lot of stories. This is from June of last year. So I don't even know if they're still here. But if you are, please send me that tales. How weird must it be to be a teacher in, like, middle school when people, like, don't know what they're doing and people are, like, finding out who they are and they're just fucking weird. Just weird kids. Like, if I was... A, I would want to teach elementary school kids because, like, they're weird, but they're weird in that, like, I like to put peanut butter up my nose, LOL. It's like, oh, stop, you'll die. I like to paint naked tails. Ah. Maybe keep doing that. You could have a, a big career on Patreon. I don't know. I was around 12 years old and went to visit my aunt uncle for the weekend. When it Your came time uncle. for bed, they set me up in their media room, which had those double doors that closed, but leave a small gap in the center. Why do those exist? Like saloon doors, you mean? Or like a closet? Did they put you in a closet? At this age, I had just begun to figure out masturbating. No fucking way. With your aunt and uncle, who, who you don't stay with regularly. Like, if your mom walks in, it's like one thing. It's embarrassing. But, you know, whatever. I mean, you clearly got caught, but how bad was it? As any 12-year-old boy does, I look up sex on YouTube and begin to jostle my Johnson. D d does that work? While I'm yoinking my sploinky, I hear a banging sound <laughs> on the doors. Banging? At this age, I still <laughs> believed in ghosts, so I just assumed a ghost was banging on the door. Hey! Stop that! I live here! The ghost was probably standing right next to you, and then you just whipped that shit out and started going. He's like, oh, fuck! Can you stop? That's why they put you in here! I'd be mad as hell! To scare away the ghost, I make a weird face at the door, Willie still in hand, YouTube sex documentary still playing loudly. It's a ghost! What do you think you're- How are you gonna scare a ghost? He <laughs> fucking- Ghost. Oh! Oh my god! This happens three more times, and I give the same reaction to the ghost. <laughs> you, you, did, <laughs> you keep turning around and making a weird face at, at the ghost on the other end of the room, banging on the door? The next morning, my aunt and uncle ask if I'm okay, and I don't really know why they're acting so strange. Only years later do I realize what I had done. Yeah, listen, Curtis can't stay with us anymore. And also, I think you should need, you need to talk with him about his internet use habits. It's an aunt and an uncle, right? It's not even a grandma and a grandpa. The aunt and uncle is, is way worse. 
Because they're like the same age as the parents. Imagine you have your 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 nephew over and he's just jacking off in the media room and when you just Hey to let him know that you know what he's doing. He just turns around and gives you googly eyes three times too uh, But hey listen when you're that young Hormones take over. I get it. I get it. I think 12 is a little too young for that though. That's ugh. But yeah, yeah, people make dumb decisions at that age, right? So at work, I usually handle taking customer returns. Okay. One day back when I was still not as used to the job, this lady comes in with her return in a box. I try to check the item inside despite her warning and pull it out to see it's a fucking vibrator. All right. In shock, I accidentally say fairly loudly, oh and quickly shove it back in the box. Uh-huh. To make matters worse, this poor lady who is standing there embarrassed tries to smooth things over by saying <laughs> quietly, I'm <laughs> very lonely. Oh, okay. Oh, why did she have to do that? That poor woman. She didn't have to say anything. I think that's the worst part. She could have just let that rock. Like, non-lowly people buy stuff too, right? Rare actual cringe on CC. Yeah, that's kind of bad, actually. This one is pretty bad. I will say that. I, I feel like you have to see the return, though. You have to look at it, right? That's like part of the process. You don't just take the box and go, okay, I guess I'll return. You have to open it up. What if there wasn't a vibrator in there? What if it was a, a twig or a stick? And you never looked. Honestly, you were just doing your job. That's fine. It's my birthday and I invited the Happy girl birthday! I liked from an online event I was holding for a good group of my friends. Before this, we had just went to prom with each other six days ago. We weren't going out, but she agreed to be my day. Cool. There's this one boy we both know named Adrian that she supposedly was just friends with. Uh-huh. During prom I went to go pee pee. Don't say that. I don't like- I really don't like that you said that. During prom I went to go pee pee, and I come back and see them slow dancing together. I bet Adrian doesn't say pee pee! I bet Adrian doesn't say that. You think Adrian goes potty? You think he goes tinkle? I walk back over to her and proceed to slow dance with her then with him a joke to make it less awkward for me interrupting them. Okay, I guess that's kind- I guess that's kind of funny. Like you slow dance with her and then you slow dance with him like it kind of it's a it's awkward but i get it i get where the idea is right you're trying to like lessen it a little bit it's a little weird but like i don't think it's good but i kind of understand we talked about it later and she just said he asked her to dance uh-huh now during my event i wanted to do something similar to crunch confessional with my sure. friends since it's such an amazing idea it really is of Thank course you. she's there and when everyone submitted their story she does as well. Oh, no. But she knows you're there. Like, why would she do that in front of you? Surely she doesn't name you. She won't name you, When I though. look at the story she submitted, it was about me cock-blocking her. My prom date uh, from doing another guy. Uh, me and her did nothing together as she told me that she didn't want to have sex until she went to college. Okay. She then proceeded to send that story and immediately leave with me having to explain it to nearly 15 okay. other people all at once. All right. Yeah. The whole event, including uh, this, was also what? recorded and uploaded onto YouTube by my friend for a group YouTube channel. Why? Why would you document that? Why did you do that? No, 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 delete that. What are you doing? Let's watch it. No, I'm not watching that. Delete that now. You had the idea. Well, I had the idea, but you had the idea to do my thing. And now they're doing this to you. Did she say it was you? Cause you're making it sound like you had to explain it in front of all of them. They know who she went with at prom so they could infer. Oh yeah, yeah, she shouldn't have said prom. There are ways to dance around this. Everyone deserves L's in this story. This is, this is gross. This is just old high school, dumb, gross. It just makes me feel nasty to read. I hate this. That's a bad story, but it is cringe. Thank you. Be me, probably still pre-kindergarten age. Okay. Come from an average middle-class white family. Are you green texting on Cringe Confessional? All right, I'm you. I'm you, and I came from an average middle-class white family. What next? Have a black uncle named Billy. Okay. Billy never gets in the pool like everyone else. I find this really weird because everyone loves swimming. All right. Then I have an epiphany. You push Billy into Realize the pool? that Billy is afraid of the water. All right. So I'm all of my childlike wisdom. I exclaim, Billy, I know why you're so much darker than everyone. You can't take a bath because you're afraid of the water. 
<laughs> My family, yeah, including Billy, are Billy, crying from laughter. Billy is just really dirty. You think he just has never had a bath? Undo. Hey, they took it well. Everybody's laughing. Even Billy's laughing, you guys. It's all a good time. So now, some 20 or so years later, this story still gets brought up at oh, family they, gatherings these things. if they Billy and I are together. both there. Okay. So I'm constantly reminded about my hypothesis oh, about why my favorite uncle is so dark. Oh, come on. This is funny. This is fine. No, no. This is a fun family story. Yeah, they're just going to remind you forever. Dude, kids are dumb. You're pre-kindergarten, so I told you guys this story. Astute viewers might remember this tale. When you have a kid, I've got a three-year-old. When you have a kid, you don't think of all the things that you have to tell them and run through all the drills of things that you have to sort of talk to them about. And uh, my daughter, she'll see kids, and she'll get excited. She'll see, like, kids her age, and she'll know they're her age. And she'll be like, oh, hi, friend, hi, friend, and she'll run over to them. She likes making friends. My daughter is very extroverted, right? She saw a little person the other day. She, like, ran up to them saying, hi, friend, hi, friend. And they, I don't think they noticed. They, they just kept walking. And I, I, I think they may have just been on other stuff. Like, she didn't do it loudly. But, yeah, it was kind of uncomfortable. And I, I didn't, yeah, like, you don't run through that. You don't know to teach them that, right? And what do I say now? She's not really old enough to comprehend it, even if I explained it still. So, it's just a lot of things like that. So thinking that you're, if you come from a white family and you randomly have a black uncle, I could see being a little confused. Although I still don't know why he was so afraid of water. That's still, that, that is a little curious. I should have pushed him into the pool. Just to, <laughs> I thought that's where that was going. I pushed him into the pool and I found out he couldn't swim and he had to go to the ER. That's what I, that's what I thought was going to happen, but thank goodness it didn't. When I was about six years old. The whole class was invited to a classmate's laser tag birthday party. Okay. It was my first time at laser tag, and I was very excited. Sure. Though it was not made clear to me that in order for the guns and vests to work, the room has to be dark. Uh-huh. I did not like the dark. The play area was decorated with biohazard symbols, and upon being shot, the vests would flash and let out a robotic voice clip which said, You are dead. <laughs> and as a kid who struggled to tell fiction from reality, oh my God. this was a little too much for me, so I looked for the exit. Oh my God, dude! You were six? I would be scared that I would think that I died. I actually, I'm a ghost on earth. I got shot by the laser tag gun. Why did my parents take me here? What kind of a birthday party is this? I would be sure I was dead. And now you have to look for the exit. You can't find it. So you think that your soul is just condemned to walk amongst those halls forever. Unfortunately, the maze like layout yeah, you were and stuck. the poor lighting yep. made escape you're, you're almost trapped impossible. There. Yeah. So there Snap I am moment. in the dark maze surrounded on all sides by kids bigger than me. Their faces ominously oh my underlit God. by the light vest. Fight or flight time. So what did I do? Cried, right? No, I didn't shit myself. I, okay, I thought you just Instead, yeah, my feeble okay. six-year-old uh -huh. arm struck the nearest kid over the head with my light <laughs> gun as hard as I could. You gotta get out of there! Fight or flight! Fight or flight! The only thing they fear is you. You have to fucking... You gotta get out of there. The vest said I'm dead. Today is the day that I live. Rip and tear! I would get my I would get the fuck out of there. By any means necessary. I would go on a fucking rampage. Just with the butt of the gun. Kill tacular. <laughs> Alright, what happened? Instead, my f the kid quite likely retaliated in self-defense. <laughs> oh no, the he's strong too. Unfortunately, the adult oh, supervising God. us only saw two kids causing trouble and kicked both of us out no more than <laughs> ten minutes into an hour-long okay. party. Wait, how long? Two minutes into an hour-long party? Dude, I feel so bad for that other kid. You fucked up his whole party. If I was that other kid, I'd be mad as hell. Some kid got scared and, and hit me with a gun, and now I have to sit the party out. The two of us were forced to get along in the neighboring <laughs> soft play area until the end of the party. Never mind, based, uh, based adults. That's great. Fantastic adult parenting there. I hope you both learned a lesson. If I was that kid, we're enemies until the end of time. How old was the kid? Well, it just says the nearest kid over the head with my light gun as hard as I could. All the kids are bigger, so probably around six, seven, eight. Yeah. Dragged him into the afterlife with you. Never go out without a fight. Based, actually. Good story. And well told. I like that. Dude, yeah, I don't think you, you're old enough for laser tag at six. Or at least don't have things saying you are dead. 
That would confuse me too. I'd be like, what did I even do? Show me something. Back when Puff. I was in 12th grade, the hard prom shit. was coming up and people were starting to do their prom oh, puzzles hell yeah. to their we're friends' crushes. We're in high school crushing. now. Fuck yeah. That's where all the cringe happens. I had a crush on my good friend, and she liked to play Overwatch a lot at the time. Ooh, this could go many different ways. So I got around 15 of my friends to help me with it. What? All of them dressed up in gimmick dollar store gear to each act as one of the characters from the game. Okay. So when the day came, I walked into class with a team, in a full suit with theme music and all, and gave her a letter to recruit her to join the team. There's no way. You're telling me you walked in with a speaker with 15 of your friends dressed up as every Overwatch character. Play of the game. I would die if I was the girl. This is the one thing you know about her that she sometimes likes Overwatch? It's the one thing you know. Surely she responded appropriately. I bet she loved this in front of the whole class. I even printed and painted 3D sure icons for her based oh on her favorite God. character. Oh my God, she plays Genji? Genji made? She loved it. Everyone oh. loved it. It was recorded and even put in the yearbook. Oh, fuck me. Never mind. All right, I feel so stupid. I The whole point of this show is to send cringe. Not uplifting memories that will last a lifetime. He won? You won with that. Actual play of the game. Okay, all right, so it's in the yearbook. When does this get bad? Fast forward three weeks. I go to pick her up, and she tells me she is no longer interested in going with me. What? Now here I am alone at prom after everyone knew what I did being basically stood up. We haven't spoken to each other since. What? Still killed it on the dance floor, though. That's it? That's the whole story. You went through all that trouble. Is she still... No. <laughs> now, okay, listen. Now, that's an AWOL moment. I don't like saying it too much, all right? You guys know how I feel. Yeah, it, but that, I would say that's an AWOL moment. I guess you do feel obligated to say yes. After all of that, after all the work that you put in, you do kind of have to say yes. Especially when you're doing that in front of the whole school. That's a peer pressure thing. I guess so. Be me, female, in seventh grade at a Catholic elementary or middle school. This is the second person I've been tonight. I'm sick of being you guys. Growing up, I always wanted to be one of the boys because I liked them more than the girls in Tom my class. Sure, 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 Hence, sure. I would always try to laugh at their jokes and get in on them. Yeah. One day in religion class, we watched some video religion from a 22-year-old guy who talked about being Catholic as a young person or something. All right. Nobody really took the class or religion seriously and it often <laughs> upset my teacher. Okay. The next day, she was getting mad at the class about not paying attention to the video. Where do you live? Is this like the Bible Belt? Where are we? Utah? You well, no, it's Catholicism. That's not Utah. That's Mormonism. This sounds like a UK moment. Is this something that happens in the UK? Could have been a private school. Yeah, but like, yeah, I guess so. A fairly popular guy raised his hand and said <laughs> he went home and watched more of his videos. I actually love that guy. I subscribe. She hopefully asked, did you really? And he, very defensively replied yes <laughs> i did i instantly burst out laughing because i thought he was joking that i hey that i would i just did that now i think he's dicking around too i would have laughed too oh but i can see where this gets ugly i can see where this is headed i wanted to be the first one to laugh so all the boys uh, would yeah, see how cool sure, i was and sure, i was the yeah. only one laughing in a completely yeah silent that's room bad like that's people. bad everyone turned to look at me including the guy and the teacher mm. and they all stared at me like i had just kicked a puppy <laughs> and i realized i had just made fun of someone who was actually trying to better himself and make the teacher feel better about her job yeah that's I'm a good in college one. now and this still makes me feel so embarrassed that's a great one that is a fantastic story because that's like perfectly relatable everybody's been through something like that you were trying to do something because you thought it would make you look cool you're the only one that did it that's fantastic this is uh yeah this is similar to the story that i've told on on my stream before about the <laughs> the girl who i called an ogre I still think about that, and I feel kind of bad. When Strap I was in. in high school, I sat next to this girl that I liked, and I wanted to ask her to homecoming. Yep. You know how TI-84 calculators let you type out letters? Yeah. Well, during a quiz, I used my calculator to type out homecoming. Ooh, that's sweet. And slid it to her. Okay. She very quietly says, no. 
<laughs> Sorry. And I just sit there for the rest uh, of the quiz, cringing okay, my eyes Okay, you know what? Out. It could have been worse. But the been story worse. doesn't end there. All right. A few days you later, asked our teacher asked class, who was easily like... embarrassed for a demonstration about magnetism. Uh-huh. Everyone in the class immediately shouts my name because I was, in fact, very easily embarrassed. That's a really weird personality trait to have that everybody knows about. Why does everybody in the class know? Oh, that guy is that guy gets so embarrassed. That guy over there is the most embarrassed person. This is a weird teacher. Well, it might be funny. For the sake of anonymity, I'll okay. call the girl Julia and my best friend that also sat next to me, Tim. Uh, <laughs> this is a funny way to say Tim. Uh, their names are definitely Julia and Tim. You don't have to lie. Listen, I get why you did this. But I promise you the stories that are submitted to Cringe Confessional are 100% anonymous. I get that you don't believe me because it would be kind of funny if I held on to those and they weren't actually anonymous. But I swear to God, they're 100% anonymous all the way through. I, I would change names too if I was submitting to Cringe Confessional. I get it. So my teacher goes, Anon. You are attracted to Julia, and Julia is equally as attracted to you. Ah, uh, okay. You are also attracted to Tim, and Tim is equally as attracted to you. Yeah. But you are more attracted to Julia than you are to Tim. Okay. My face is beet red. The entire class is out of breath from laughter. Okay. By now, the calculator story has been spread oh to the entire my student God. body. But my teacher had no idea. Oh, she no. She kept going with this bit about <laughs> how attracted I am for five whole minutes. But it felt like years. She knew. She knew. You think the teachers don't know? You think word doesn't get around the teacher's line? She fucking knew. I cringed so hard <laughs> I am still suffering from the long-term balding. That's funny. Anyways, we ended up becoming pseudo-friends oh, after that's sweet. this. Good ending. We both told our physics teacher the calculator story on the last day of our senior that's year. Fun. And had a good laugh over Aww. it. That's a good ending. That's pretty funny. What's a pseudo friend? I kind of get that. Like a pseudo friend is like somebody who you like know and you like and you would sit with at lunch, but you don't like go to their house, right? Situational friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not going out of your way. That's a fun, cute story. I don't know why y you doing the TI-83 thing had to spread throughout school, though. That feels unnecessary, right? It's just a, a rejection. God, high school must be so hard, especially now with the internet. Oh, my God. You guys are in hell. When I was in the first grade, I did a lot of... I forgot about this. Whose voice is this? This is Rod, I think. Rod always has some issues with the word grade. This is not the first time. When I was in the first grade, I did a lot of my word definitions from inference. Okay. For instance, I thought that the word rebel meant good guy, cause Star Wars. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. This is gonna go very wrong in a few minutes when you tell the rest of the story, but I get it. So we start learning about the Civil War with the document. Oh no. And they introduce the Confederacy oh as the rebel states. Oh so I God. say, go rebels. I learned the true meaning that they, and I learned to research before I cheer. <laughs> that is a fantastic story. Short to the point, that's great. You know what's crazy? The other kids were thinking the same thing. I am pu you're in the first grade. They don't fucking know. There's no way those kids knew. They were like, oh, hell yeah. We love the rebels. Yeah, it depends on where you live in America, too. Maybe the, maybe the whole class cheered, <laughs> including the teacher. Fantastic story. When I was in the eighth grade, Great. myself and the rest of our class would play soccer during lunch. Before a match, we'd have captains draft their teams. I was always selected first or second, not because I was great at soccer, but because I had the strongest leg. Again, weird uh, personality trait to have, weird attribute. You were born with a strong leg perk. Not even legs, just they were just like, hey, that kid's got a really powerful right leg. We gotta get him on our team. One time, a girl was chosen as the opposing team's goalie. Uh-oh. After 15 minutes of playing, the score yeah, was kicked even the zero. shit out of that ball. I was frustrated because the other team was doing everything they could to keep the ball away from me. <laughs> oh, no. That kid's got a strong leg. Keep it away. You gotta keep the ball away from that kid. He's got the biggest leg. This kid's just walking around with the most defined leg you've ever seen. Steroids into the right leg only. A as the lunch period was winding down, okay. I finally got my chance. The ball was passed to me and I let out my frustration with Did the strongest this shot I girl? could muster. I let it rip and absolutely crushed the girl right between the eyes. Got her ass. It gets worse. The ball bounced right back to me. <laughs> and in the heat of the moment, I took a second shot and hit her in the face oh as she brought God. down her hands. Combo! This dude saw the ball coming. He fucking... Agoo! Agoo! 
Good timing. That's funny. Okay, good, great. That poor girl. Honestly, uh, I don't know if you were targeting for the second one, but being able to hit the same target twice is, like, genuinely impressive. By the way, good goalie. She blocked both of them. She went down to her knees crying and had some blood running down her okay. nose. Uh, the rest of the class was not uh, happy with me, to say the least. Well, I, uh, well, I have to give her credit, though. She did yeah. block the shot. Yeah, good for her, honestly. Good goalie. W goalie. Why did he do the combo? Because he wanted to make the goal. He knocked her once, and then she got in the way of the second one. It'd be an insult if she, he didn't take the shot twice. Well, I'd be mad as hell, too. if I, Dude, if they kept the ball away from me the entire game, I would absolutely rocket that shit the moment I got to touch it. And then they're mad at you for cracking it. Maybe if they gave you more shots, you wouldn't have to store up all your pent-up energy in that one. Kid with the big-ass leg. In my freshman year of college, I had a major crush on this one girl in my class. Yeah? She was an artist and invited me as her date to a gallery where some of her work was being showcased. Oh my god, okay, Before good the for show, her. she took Damn. me to a spot that overlooked the entire city because she wanted to watch the sunset with me. Aww. And during the show, she kept on holding my hand. Oh, that's so sweet. On the red home, she mentioned that she still lived at home, but her parents were on a cruise. So I responded with, damn, I hope they have fun on the cruise. Honestly, good. <laughs> that's a good answer. That's because you don't want to assume what she means. You don't want to assume what she means. But I love that your first thought is like, damn, I hope they have a good time. I've never been on a cruise. Later on the drive, she asked me if we could stop at her place because she was tired and didn't want to drive all the way to mine. So I agreed. Sure. When we walk into her door, I pull out my phone to call an Uber and she grabs my arm and goes, what are you doing? And I look her dead in the eyes and say, well, I can't walk home. Dude. She then starts tearing up and goes to her room and I sit confused alone on her couch for 15 minutes waiting for the Uber. Oh. She ghosted me a week later. It took me six months to realize that she probably asked me out on a date and had feelings for me. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. How do you fumble this hard? Listen, it's easy to... to say what you should have done from the stands. When you're in the game, it can be a little... I get it. Because you don't want to make assumptions. You had a nice time. You don't know what she... You know what I mean? Like, she definitely wanted you to, like, follow her and ask her why she's upset. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a little tough. I'm throwing shit in the ring. He's dumb as hell. Yeah, yeah maybe a little... Uh, that is a lot of time, I guess. She should have said something. I Yeah, but what do you say? Missed connections are the worst kind of cringe because I think everybody has a story like that, right? Where, like, you think you're making it as clear as possible and the other person doesn't get it. And then the other way around. Ugh. One time during choir class, a girl walked up to me and said that I had the calves of a Disney character. I responded saying that I had no clue what that was supposed to mean. I proceeded to walk towards my chair trying to imagine what the calves of Bambi and Buzz Lightyear looked like. Huh. That's something that'll stick with somebody for life. Because that's so suspiciously pointed. I would be thinking about that for the rest of my life. Yeah, I'd be like, what did they What did they mean? I would be watching every Disney movie like that guy. <laughs> like that. Oh, that. And I'm sure that other person <laughs> never thinks about it. The other per the person that said it never thinks about it ever for the rest of their life. They forgot they said it. But the person they inflicted it on thinks about it forever. I never thought about how much power words can have. You could inflict somebody with a lifelong ailment that way and just tell them that they look like something very specific and then just walk away. And you'll never remember it, but they will. Shrek is not a Disney care. I'm mad at you for saying, you know what? Thanks for tuning in to Cringe Confessional. Sorry it's over. That fucking guy ruined it for everybody. Thanks for tuning in. If you liked it, go ahead and subscribe. And if you didn't like it, well, get the fuck out. I don't like you either. I don't pick the stories, you know. Somebody else does that for me. I just do the best with what I can. Get the fuck out of my channel, but subscribe before you go and drop a like. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Go to the recommended and watch something else I made. You can get off of this video. Just go to another video. Hey, I do a lot of other cringe confessionals. Why not watch one of those?